It is the Riot Podcast. Big stretch, Hudson. Big yeah, stretch. Stretch bigger. Gotta, gotta stretch big out. Boy. Prepare for my. Uh, hey, big boy is different. For my gaming. Big, big boy. <laughs> There's a big boy there. <laughs> <laughs> He's not Jim. It's not your dog. No. <laughs> well, welcome to the podcast for today. Yes. Welcome in, Isaiah. Let's just get right into it. What did we talk about? The one thing Remind that I us. that I do that I have tried mm. and I do like is peanut butter and jelly. Aww. I mean, one of my favorite foods of all time. Yeah, I can feel like you're you. someone who really got into Uncrustables, or uh, maybe still love, is. Still love them. Now if you they know you here, can. I, oh my god, it's all over TikTok. Still, you can just throw those in an air fryer. Oh, I heard oh, that. I haven't that done it, amazing. but I heard that. Easy. I've, I've I bet Next you that'd level. be great because I've made uh, grilled peanut butter and jelly. Yeah, which oh, yeah. is immaculate. But it's a huge mess because yeah. the peanut butter melts everywhere. But if you yeah. kept, you had it all contained in the uncrustable, man, it's, you'd be living. It's I, perfect. I, I always would tell my mom, she's like, what do you want for dinner? I'm like, how about a PB&J Aww. platter? And, <laughs> and milk. Yeah. And, 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 oh, my gosh. You have to, you have, to have milk well, with this peanut is and not jelly. peanut butter and jelly like that. These are no. two turkeys. Yeah, they're turkeys named peanut butter and jelly. That are probably going to be the happiest turkeys on Thanksgiving. That's right. Because they are pardoned. The yes. only problem is they're going to Indiana. So. <laughs> yeah. Jasper. But you know what? That's they probably they don't know from anything. They're, first from, place, so they're yeah. from Jasper. That was their home. So, so they like don't they know anything better than. They're True. from the middle of nowhere, Indiana. Yeah. No, I think what's awesome is if the turkeys, they get to go to the White House to be pardoned, mm. and they get the big city life of D.C. Yeah. and all that, and they don't want to go back. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Like, well, maybe we belong here. Yeah, they want to find a sanctuary in the D.C. area. Yeah, all they'll want to do after they get back to Indiana is fly the coop. Yep, yeah, they went exactly. out. <laughs> we uh, talked about that. We also talked about how I just had a terrible wake up this morning. Aww. Yeah. And uh, Jim just continues to uh, sabotage my life. I feel We've... like you need to bring your dog in and we just need to sit down and have a talk with him because it's but just, uh, it's not working. We, I think we said this before. He cannot bring his dog in well, he'll because just... he'll poop somewhere. He'll throw up here. Poop here. Yeah. He'll throw up here. I mean, granted, most of, the, most of the building has like tile floors or yeah. at least the, he, you keep him on the main floor and out of this studio. He can, I mean, it'd be an easier cleanup. I'm telling you. If anybody happens. is doing animal training, listen and then feel free to text 877 radio you uh, how bad Isaiah is <laughs> being a doggy dad. Hey, listen, it's, it's not me, it's the dog. I swear. The worst part is that I, uh, he was like, I got the first pick of the litter. Oh, there were nine of them. Him. He had to be a bottom three pick. Like, there's yeah, no right. chance. <laughs> he was worth you the know, number one pick. You know, just, no way. You whiffed. You yeah. whiffed on that one. They're like, yeah, I go in. They're like, they tell you to do all these things. Yeah, didn't matter. Didn't yeah. matter. I did all these things. Little did I know that he was the demon child of the entire litter. It's going to set you back a few years oh my like gosh. in development. You You're... just can't help it when you pick out a dog. They pick you. Yeah. And he knew. I guess. Uh, it was meant to be. Mm. Yeah, it, maybe it's good, and maybe other people wouldn't be able to handle his Aww. antics like you Oh, uh, yeah, you're right, you're right. And you're you right. love him. Yeah, he would have been returned, definitely. <laughs> he would have been returned if it wasn't for me. Um, also, this story I thought was, uh, this was a funny story, the one with the spike strip. Yeah. That uh, took out everybody except for who it was supposed except to. Except the intended target in yes. Tucson, and Arizona. What's surprising is, evidently, you don't hear about it, but that happens fairly Often with spike strips, with spike strips, mm-hmm. it's just like they throw them out, and it's like, hey, we'll figure out, we'll figure it out <laughs> after the fact who gets their tires spiked. Well, you get them all sorted out afterwards, yeah. but it can be dangerous. Catch so the they... criminal first, deal with all <laughs> the non criminals afterwards. They had an yeah. issue with one this past weekend. Mm-hmm. Yeah, see, I didn't even know that that was like a real thing. Spike strips, you thought it was just in video like, games thought, and movies? Yeah, I thought it was like a movie thing where Dude, they kind of yeah, tossed them out. You see the police out. officer and he slides them out. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. Pulls them back it's all in. dramatic and it, stuff. It looks yeah. really cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like a blockade. Like, you never really, really see like all the police officers like standing there mm-hmm. with their cars, but apparently. See, it happens. I, I didn't mention this when we first talked about it, which we'll, you'll hear later, but we're talking about it after we talked about it now. And so I didn't mention this earlier, but uh, I always thought that the police just like when they had to put a spike strip out, they diverted the other cars. It's just like, hey, pull off or whatever for a mm-hmm. few minutes. We've got another uh, somebody we're chasing coming through. But then 
I guess that'd be a dead giveaway to the person they're chasing. Yeah. They're like, hey, maybe All I should pull cars off. Are off the road. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can see that one coming. So there's just no way to win. <laughs> well, make sure you guys check out after the podcast. We've launched our Radio U Christmas channel. So if you want to hear Hudson and I and Isaiah makes an appearance as well, along with some of our Radio U Christmas music, go to RadioU.com, our Radio U app, and our Radio U Roku channel has it with our Yule Log. Mm-hmm. You can enjoy our Christmas channel when the podcast is done. And don't forget to find us on Facebook for our Forza Horizon 5 playthrough Mm -hmm. uh, live stream as well. We're doing that in a minute. So if you head over to Radio U Riot or Radio U on Facebook, um, you can watch that anytime this weekend. All right. Have Have a great great weekend. We'll catch you next time. Store at room temperature. Now that they can do. The Riot Radio U. Uh, It is the, today's the day. That uh, a turkey will get pardoned by the president of the United States of America. Oh, yeah. Doesn't that happen each year? It does. And the, to this year, uh, there's actually, uh, here's how it's going down. There's two turkeys that are eligible to be pardoned. Mm-hmm. Peanut butter. Yeah. And jelly. Oh, those are cute Isn't names. that so sweet? You think Aww. they're like married or something? Or I are they brother and sister? Friends. They're best, best friends. friends. Yeah. yeah, forever. It does sound like a... <laughs> A Nickelodeon TV show or something, you know, for very, very small children. And it's peanut butter and jelly and they're turkeys. I don't and, know. And uh, they go to, they're just starting to go to school. I feel like that could be an Adult Swim sort of uh, peanut butter and jelly. Yeah. It's an animated cartoon. They die at the end of every episode. <laughs> yeah, and then they come back for a new storyline. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. That's because they don't get pardoned in that show. Uh, so it's a never ending sort of thing. One of them will be pardoned, but both of them will be spared. The well, okay. So, are there turkeys at the White House, or like, do they pick it from a local farm? Uh, yeah, I think it's just uh, one lucky farm always gets drawn every year in some way, and they get to pick the traditionally one turkey that's pardoned. But yeah, this time this, it's two. This year, they're feeling. I mean, they're still only pardoning one, but they're going to save two of them from the Thanksgiving table. Although, you know, if a turkey got slaughtered today. Probably be a lot of a quick turnaround to get it ready for somebody's Thanksgiving feast, anyways. Yeah, I'm not sure how think? that works. Do they like do they freeze like them it, and then it goes next year? If the turkey is made it this far, <laughs> this close to Thanksgiving, it probably wasn't. I mean, it might still get killed eventually. Well, okay, let's stop thinking about that. Let's just but think no, positive that's what we're things. To think about because they're pardoning these ones, and it's it's also supposed to remind you of the fate of all the other. Un- unlucky turkeys out there. So do they, where do they go when they get pardoned? <laughs> oh, they were raised in Jasper, Indiana. Oh. And both turkeys uh, are male and they weigh about 40 pounds. Uh, okay. So and the- there was a press conference about them. Uh, they say raising the turkey flock has been hard the or it's been a lot of fun this year. I read that as hard. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! Why? These, <laughs> like wow! These turkeys are very difficult. Yeah, you're like uh, Nikki said it was hard. Nope, they said it actually has been a lot of fun. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> Those turkeys are like, come on, Nikki. Yeah, it's been a great year. Why are you year? giving us a bad rap? I guess we just assume everything has been the worst. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> good, good on uh, peanut butter and jelly. We wish them all the best in wherever they wind up. I guess probably back in Indiana. They do. So following today's ceremony, peanut butter and jelly, the turkeys will return to their home in Indiana where they'll never be seen again. Uh, Ah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) They try to escape the paparazzi. They try to just live a very low-key life for the rest of their lives because they're famous now. I I don't know. uh, We've done this since 1947, it says. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I just like the term pardon the turkey. As if the turkey committed a crime, and You're its right. crime is being a turkey. You're right. That's it. That, that's not a crime. It's it's it, not being pardoned. It never did anything to deserve that no, in the first it didn't. place. No, you're right. We, so do we say they're excused <laughs> to go back home? Actually, that's nice. Yeah, they're excused <laughs> from being slaughtered. We didn't even need to bring them from Indiana. They could have just stayed there. Uh-huh. The turkey's like, oh, an errand? Really? <laughs> do I have to go? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, peanut butter, come here. Jelly, come on. Let's go. You're oh, going to Mom, the White House. do we have to? <laughs> that's the whining I want to <laughs> yeah, hear. Uh-huh. That sounds like, that's why I was so hard to raise them. That's right. Those whining peanut butter and jelly. Why pay for so many streaming services that you don't really care about when you can not really care about the riot for free? Radio U. I heard that from you that Jim, your dog, uh, had some issues this morning. Oh, man. This morning was probably one of the most frustrating mornings in a while. Aww. I could punch a small child kind of morning. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? 
Like I will come. It's just up, a figure of speech. Yes, guy. of course. I don't know if I want to let you touch my Xbox. Then. Listen, <laughs> I wake, I'm not driving with you today. Yeah, I wake up this morning at like 2 a.m. Jim wakes me up because he has to go to the bathroom. Fine, whenever. I hate when he wakes me up in the middle of the night because he can. I know he can hold it throughout the night because he does it most of the time. But fine, I let him outside. He goes to the bathroom. He's kind of messing around out there. I'm like, whatever. He comes back inside. About an hour later, he's like laying by my feet, and I hear him making a weird noise. <laughs> And I'm like, what is he doing? And it was weird enough to where it woke me up in the middle of my sleep. And I look down, and he is throwing up in my bed. Oh. And I, 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 I was like, okay, maybe it's just like a little bit, like just like a tiny little bit. It was like all of his dinner. It was oh, so no. much. And so I was like, okay, it's fine, whatever. So I take all the sheets, throw them in the washer. I have to wake up my roommate because the washer's like in his closet. He's like, what's going on? Oh, man. I'm like, Jim puked to my bed. He was like, he's got to be the worst dog in Columbus. <laughs> I'm like, I know. I you know, know. Jim is not feeling the support, though. You know, he wasn't feeling good. Yeah, he wasn't feeling good, and I wasn't feeling good either. Yeah, and he, he knew that. And so then I had to sleep on the couch, but Jim then was not ready to go back to bed. He was awake. Oh, it's hard to sleep after you throw up. Exactly. So he's, he's standing on my chest. He's like messing around. He's bringing me his toys. So oh. from like 3.30 to 4.30, I just didn't sleep at all. Wow. So it was awesome. It was well, a great morning. He uh, well, he knew well, he did Jim something wrong. Morning. Yeah, yeah, he had a great morning. Yeah, he had so time. much fun. You know, after he threw up, then he was ready to play. And then right when like my alarm went off, he like was getting ready to like go to bed. And then he just stood on my chest one more time. Aww. And that was enough for me to be like, all right, get in the shower. It's over. <laughs> Not snoozing today. Not snoozing today. I'm going into work. I believe wow. in you. Yeah, but I'm, I'm getting there early today. I'm out of here. <laughs> oh, it seems like he probably, when he, he went out the first time, he probably ate something. Yeah, yeah. ate something he wasn't supposed to, which we've been over. You know, yeah, don't yeah, eat you things him about that. that you're not supposed to, yet he still continues to do it every day. How are you supposed to know you're not supposed to eat it until you try it? Because, listen, because I, I give him There's things to so eat. There's only so much he can eat. I give him things to eat. If I don't give it to you, don't eat it. But he nah. continues to eat rocks and sticks and pieces of, <laughs> pieces of dirt and whatever he can find out there. And it continues to end the same way. Madness for me. Wait, see, Jeez. normally my dog Rolo, like his stomach, it'll give me notice. Like it'll make all these noises. Oh. And if he's been outside, I'm like, oh, yeah, you got into something. And it's yeah. just a countdown till it happens. And so you just have to listen for the gurgle. Yeah, I need to start listening. It was it was because when he get, came back inside, like I was so tired. So I just laid around. I was like, okay, back to bed, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then once I heard him start making noise at the end yeah. of the bed, I was like, wow, my night is over. Yeah. That's, that's It's you just know. beginning. Yes. <laughs> It was awful. So, and then it was even worse. It was like an hour away from like me having to work because like if it was like at midnight, then like okay, I have four hours still right. where I can like get back into it. An hour left, like, and he w- w- didn't want to go back to sleep, and so then I'm like sleeping like five minutes at a time. Didn't even really count. Like no sleep even happened. <laughs> yeah, I was just laying there. That is the anger. worst. If you missed out on the next riot moment when it originally aired, you don't know how lucky you are. You're listening to the worst of the riot podcast. Uh, Nikki, did you know that uh, in the in the area of North Carolina, it is not unusual now to see armadillos? Armadillos? Yeah. In North Carolina? Yep. I don't even know if I've ever seen an armadillo like in real life. I've uh, I've petted an armadillo. You Pet, touched one? Is it petted? Pat? Pet? You, you uh, touched. I've touched an armadillo <laughs> in a friendly manner. Weird. At the, uh, one time at the grocery store, it was around Christmas time. Wait, was it? It was alive though. Yeah. At the grocery store. The the zoo people. Uh, they brought an armadillo and something else, and so yeah. Even though if you go to the zoo, they don't have armadillos. Well, this but is but they one, brought one to the thing. It was um. It's not dangerous, but it's not too big, not too small. Yeah. So you could bring it, and it probably is a good push for it, the zoo. They are. Uh, they're very cute. Aww. The armadillos, which is why I'm confused because so here's what's happening in North Carolina. I guess uh, it used to be unusual to find armadillos, but now uh, they're attributing uh, like this, the scientists and the article writers and whatnot, they are attributing this to climate change, saying that uh, armadillos are moving north. They are? Yeah. (gasps) Get going, guys. You can come up to me. (laughs) I think, I think they, what, I don't know what, 
the climate change is that's making them move north. But, man, uh, they don't seem like they would handle the cold well. I guess North Carolina doesn't normally get super cold, although it does. But if it's less cold up north and they don't mind moving up. Yeah, maybe. Jason just texted in. He's in Georgia and says there's lots of armadillos. Jason, are they just like... On the road, like on the side. I kind of thought they were just. Like, they how were do you like, see them? I thought it was just Texas. Yeah, I, I don't thought know it was why Texas and New Mexico and like more of a southwestern thing. But uh, it sounds like they are expanding their territory, the armadillos. They're branching but, out. But what's funny to me, and I, because I didn't realize this at all, in uh, it's specifically this town called Sapphire, North Carolina, it says they are besieged by armadillos. And they cause problems. And it's actually, they're seen as a menace there. And and then I'm reading about this guy who's uh, basically an armadillo bounty hunter. Oh, gosh. Oh, they yeah. get money for every single one that, that uh, they produce. It looks like it basically tears up, like, your lawn. Yeah, that's what it looks like. It's a horticultural havoc, and they don't want to have as many because they just basically— they go around trying to shoot them at night, Aww. so they're trying to kill as many armadillos as possible. Well, that doesn't sound right. Oh, come on, guys. There must be like a... Move them along. I was going to say, what's an armadillo deterrent? Probably getting shot at <laughs> is one, but I yeah, mean, but is there another thing you can put in your yard, like a scare crow or something? Can we have a warning shot? Yeah, right. <laughs> you don't have to just go, but if you're getting $100, it feels like... Um, the snakes in the Everglades. It's very yeah. similar to they don't they don't want them there. Yeah, but it, snakes are dangerous. Armadillos. Maybe they're well, they're dangerous to other things. Dangerous to your yard. That's right. And hey, people have pride in their yard. You can fix your yard. <laughs> <laughs> Angela says in parts of North Florida and Georgia, they were considered a pest, like a rodent. Aww. Very common. Oh, even seen them at Disney and stuff. I've really? never seen an armadillo. Huh. How recent is this? Like, is this in our lifetimes? Maybe. The armadillos have migrated, or do we just not understand <laughs> armadillos whatsoever? Zach said he's had a client in Florida, and an armadillo tore up the sprinkler system. Oh, wow. $5,000 in oh, damages. No. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> is that covered by insurance? I do you have armadillo it. insurance? I absolutely doubt it. Sessa, oh, Sessa's armadillos carry leprosy. And that's why they're so dangerous. Oh, no. Don't we have a treatment for that, right? I don't know. I don't know at all. Don't we have a vaccine for the leprosy? I don't know. Okay, I maybe. thought that was only in Bible times. Like if we we figured, Yeah, we figured that one out, haven't we? Well, it's an old-timey sort of, you know, creature right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, back to the biblical days. Man, I shouldn't have pet that armadillo. Right, well, if it's at the Take, grocery store, it must be safe. It's not going it, to have leprosy there. It had there. The, vac- the leprosy vaccine or whatever. Oh, my gosh. So, man, I didn't. <laughs> realize i just is out here thinking one armadillos were only in texas and and like the southwest and thinking that they were harmless little fun little things that you could even have for a pet nope and apparently i was all wrong about that so what do they do with the armadillo do they eat it do they like you is there armadillo I mean, you wallets? know somebody's eating an armadillo is there uh is there like uh you know like a belt like an alligator sort of thing that's a that's a great question. I don't I'll know. Look it, is, it, up. it feels like you wouldn't have as much. You know, if you're uh, out there wrangling alligators, there's a lot of pride in that because it's like, oh, I'm tough. I can. Armadillos are little tiny little things. <laughs> no, are they you, the ones that roll? Yeah, they get into a little ball. They get a little ball. Yeah. Oh god. I mean, they they're they they're tough in their own way because yeah. they have uh, like a shell, almost like uh, a turtle like, style. But honestly, nobody is taking pride in killing turtles either. So it feels like they've been hurt, and so that <laughs> hurt creatures roll and yeah. cause problems. You know why they're moving into North Carolina? Because people keep killing them everywhere else. It sounds like <laughs> so they're going to you know, just constantly go chasing them away until they can find somewhere they like. Yeah. <laughs> you were one of the lucky few who missed the riot when they were live. Yet here you are. I also like to live dangerously. This is the worst of the Riot Podcast. Uh, I have a story here about a woman uh, in Boston. Mm -hmm. She's 27 years old. Her name is Carly. She swallowed her AirPod. She said she swallowed one. One of her AirPods Mm -hmm. from, uh, you know, an Apple AirPod, the headphone things. And she, uh, well, she, the, okay, I guess it needs an explanation. She thought she was swallowing an ibuprofen. Now, I guess there's ibuprofen um, 800s, mm-hmm. and they're like twice the size of a normal one. Uh-huh. So it's not a smaller ibuprofen. Yeah. But when you look at it, it's also not an AirPod. It's still not <laughs> it's the still AirPod not. size. And everybody keeps saying, um, I can't tell, I didn't watch through it, but like, 
Was it Pros or Pods? Because uh, AirPods have the long part to it. It was an AirPod Pro. Those are the smaller ones. Uh-huh. And she said that she thought she was taking her ibuprofen and had her AirPod Pro in one hand. Yeah. And confused it. And she said she she swallowed and, and ate the other yeah, one. Yeah, I think she uh, like she sounds like she must have been pretty out of it. Pretty. Well, maybe she had you a gotta, headache or something. Yeah, it must have been a really bad one. Probably. Oh, I mean, distra- she was taking a double dose of ibuprofen so she said she was distracted (laughs) yeah well uh so somehow she managed to get the airpod pro down and uh before she realized and then what can you do at that point you just gotta it's a waiting game wait it out Mm -hmm. and she wound up uh she got an mri to confirm after she thought she had passed it she did Uh, she wasn't in there and she decided to not save it from her excrement. Good, you let it go. Yeah, she just let, let it go. go. Uh, I was thinking, <laughs> what would you say from your excrement? Nothing. Well, unless it was like jewelry. I was thinking your wedding ring, yeah, your just, engagement ring. Would it, you save that? It would have to be something very expensive that meant something. Yeah. And there's very few items like that. But then if you had a <laughs> ring uh, and then you saved it, you would have to wear that. And then instead of being a reminder of your unending love for it your would, husband, it would, it would be... be a reminder of the time that you had to fish it out of your crap. Oh uh, no! Listen, I wouldn't tell anybody. It would yeah, just be. Yeah, but you would know. Oh, it'd be a secret though. You would feel it on I your finger at all times. I would be more embarrassed. I think I would rise to the occasion if I had to, so, but I wouldn't tell anybody about it. That's the embarrassing part. So what Nikki's telling us now is she did save her I ring. I did not. Friend. Yeah, that kind of sounds not. like it. I'm the type of person, I know people like Eric can totally take a couple of pills at a time, uh-huh. and sometimes even without water. I'm the opposite. I, I have to get, like, prepared. Oh, yeah? You have ready. to psych yourself up? Yeah, like, especially so there's no if they're way the you, bigger ones. You couldn't have been distracted and nope. swallow an AirPod. No, because I am focused. Yeah. <laughs> if I'm taking some sort of pill, I'm the uh, opposite way with, like, a whole big giant. I need, like, a gallon of water for just uh-huh. a few of them. Yeah. So I don't think I would ever do anything like that. No, I, I wouldn't. I also i am more like Eric, mm-hmm. where I can t- just swallow anything, and I'll definitely take the pill over... You know, you know what trained me to, uh, what what I think trained me to be able to swallow pills and stuff whole. What was that? Uh, when I was a child, I I I still hate vegetables, but I really hated vegetables when I was a child. And so, what I really hated was the chewing, because then you got more of the flavor if you didn't like the flavor. But also, the thing I don't like about vegetables and fruit is more of the texture. So you I just like, swallow them. So I would any kind of vegetable I could swallow whole, I would. And so that taught me to be able to swallow I'm pills you whole didn't as choke. well. Yeah, I made it all this time, huh? You did, and now you'll never swallow an AirPod Pro. I I would be able to, but I wouldn't <laughs> because I'm not that distracted. It's not the first time we've heard stories uh, about accidentally swallowing AirPod Pros. Yeah. Those well, are expensive, but I don't think they're expensive enough to save from your to save if from the you toilet. passed it. Yeah, yeah. we heard of uh, even our own Jr. He didn't swallow it, but he ate it in his sleep. He was well, chewing on it. Oh, he was chewing on yeah. it. Yeah, okay, but he spit it back he woke out. Up, he woke up and he had a chewed up AirPod in his mouth. Well, he's a he's some lucky. Of us are he's a lucky guy. Sleepers, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. The Riot Radio U. We're just a day away from football. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I told Isaiah, tell. though, because, you know, he's been uh, recovering from being sick this week. Uh-huh. That man, tomorrow, you just sit and enjoy the football, but yeah. don't do anything else. Just rest. Well, it's a big game tomorrow for Ohio State, so I can't just sit around and not do anything. You so. actually can. As long as we lose, I will do nothing, because I will just sit in my sorrow, and I will not do anything there all day. There you go. Well, I guess uh, for your sake, I hope the Ohio State loses, so, so you can just get that. the rest You're you right. need. This is a don't different weekend that. for you. you. You were hoping we lose. I guess that is not your <laughs> Norm, yeah, huh? I don't know if this is if, if this is the weekend they go down or not, but uh, d- what do you think in college? There's so Ohio State has Michigan State. Mm-hmm. That's a really big game. Both top yeah. ten teams. Is that home or away for? It is in Columbus. It's in Columbus. Yeah. Yeah. Next week, Ohio State goes on the road for Michigan. That's going to be the tough one. 
Uh, or, I mean, one of both of them could be tough. Only one, neither. We don't know. We'll see. Uh, what do you think? Is this week the dangerous week or is next week? Uh, I think that this week is a little bit more dangerous, which I know our Michigan fellow fans are not going to like. But <laughs> I, I, I have just gotten so used to beating Michigan every year yeah. that I think Michigan State being good, they've actually given us some trouble in the past where they yeah. have upset us. And so I think this, this could be a really tough game. They, uh, the thing that really scares me about them is their running back is like one of the best running backs in the country. Yeah. And so he could give us some real problems because the games we've lost are even the close games like Minnesota. You remember the first game of the oh, year? Yeah. We really struggled against Minnesota's running back until he got hurt. And then the same thing against Oregon. They kind of ran all over us and it's threw actually all over a great us. Point. So, I so wasn't, the games we've struggled, it's been the running game. I wasn't thinking about that because Michigan for next week for Ohio State has a much tougher defense. At least yeah. it would seem the Michigan State Michigan State's defense is okay. But if they can really chew up the clock by being able to run all over Ohio State, shorten up the game, it gives them a shot in the end. So it could be a tough one for the Buckeyes. Yeah, I will say if you're a Michigan State fan, the one thing that I think that you should be concerned about is your your pass defense is one of like the worst in the country. And mm. if you know anything about Ohio State, <laughs> our wide receivers Isaiah, are some of the better you're ones. So delicate with that. So I, I gave them the props that your running backs are really good. You'll probably run all over us, but more than likely, I think C.J. Stroud is probably going to throw all over them a lot just because they have a weaker secondary than most. Yeah, is there uh, if. Uh, if you don't think Ohio State's going down, is there another Oh, upset? what was the term you said when... Trap game? That's yeah, it. it's a yeah. trap game. What's so, a trap game? So one that I think this is a huge game if you're a Cincinnati fan. Also, Cincinnati is a big game this weekend, too. Uh, SMU is not ranked, but they are 8-2 and two and one of the better teams on Cincinnati's schedule. I think their best team on their schedule outside of Notre Dame. So this is a huge weekend for them. If they can get a big win, even though SMU isn't ranked, that'll still like take their resume a little bit farther. But also... Um, if you're a Cincinnati fan, you want to cheer for Utah this weekend because oh, realistically, yeah. this is one of the only ways you're going to get in. I'm telling you, it's one of the only ways is if Oregon loses this weekend at 24 Utah, Oregon still has like one more tough game. Nothing like too terribly tough, but this Utah team has a chance to take them down and Utah's at home as well. So Oregon has a tough game this weekend. Hopefully, maybe an upset happens there and it can shake things up a little bit. That would be, uh, it, it almost feels like, every, well, I mean, Utah's favored. It yeah. almost feels like everybody's expecting Oregon to lose because you're just not used to them being good. So, <laughs> yeah, I know. Like not you guys cons- are so backhanded. What? <laughs> <I know. laughs> Every time you're like, wait, am I supposed to like them? Oh, no, I'm not. No. Nope. Well, <laughs> we're like, just no, try- no, we're yep, trying nope. to have re- we're being uh it, with the exception of Ohio State where uh, Isaiah is unabashedly a fan, and I'm unabashedly not. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're Which makes trying to be even. objective, right? We're just yes. trying to be objective. We're not that's, hating on Oregon. That's good, I we guess. We just want to be objective and say, watch out. Well, what do you uh, think we the don't biggest, expect a lot from you. What's the biggest game than this weekend? Uh, probably Michigan State, okay. Ohio State. Yeah. That's, that is, that's, that's the big, the big one. one. That's the top 10 matchup. But, uh, I mean, man, we I could see an upset. You know where I think uh, – Everybody's just taking for granted. Alabama, I know. they're going to win this week. They play Arkansas, who's pretty good. Uh, and then they're going to beat Auburn. And then it's like, well, even if they lose to Georgia, they might still make the playoffs uh, in the SEC championship game. Alabama, they struggle with LSU. They've struggled with some some decent teams. Yep. Arkansas is a better than decent team. They might be able to pull off the upset. I just, I just don't know why it's like, oh, Alabama could never lose except to Georgia. They might. <laughs> they they, could. they yeah, just they could. might. They, they could lose. Another team that you want to look at uh, across the next couple of weeks is Oklahoma State, too. As they said, 9-1. They're ranked number nine right now. They play Texas Tech this week. But they're another one of those teams that if they went out, their resume is really going to get strong at the end with some, uh, some ranked opponents that they're going to have to beat. Yeah. And they could be one of the ones – fighting Cincinnati and Notre Dame for one of those last spots That's if they went right. out. They've got a shot. So there you have it. A big uh, a big college football weekend. A few big games at the top. And that's sincere sports talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is bringing Aww. that back. Hudson sees the glass is half empty. But get this. He thinks a glass half empty is good. The Riot. Radio U. Now, Nikki, you like to watch a lot of uh, police-related videos, right? I do. I got into that like maybe a year ago. Uh-huh. I've wavered. I haven't watched yeah, as many. Yeah, not but as much. A lot of police departments or just random people post uh, like body cam footage yeah. or police chase footage. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I got into watching like the real long police chases oh, yeah? where they're going through these small towns yeah. for like two hours. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, why am I watching this? But uh, it is funny. When No, it's not funny. 
but it's interesting it's to watch. Entertaining. It is to uh, see like how they can just keep going with these chases. Do you ever think to yourself like I have before? You know, a lot of times in police chases, they'll eventually put out spike strips on the road. Yeah. And you ever think to yourself, how do they make sure that they only spike strip the car that is uh, that is actually the one they're chasing oh, and sure. not just the random people out driving? I guess you ever I think always, about that? I always assume they only put out the strips when, like, right before that car is coming. Yeah. So, if, like, if it's a crowded road, they're not going to uh-huh. unless they really need to stop the guy. Well, you know person. what happens. Do you know what happens when you assume, Nikki? Well, then your car gets uh, spiked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is that what you're saying? What I'm saying is and you're not the one if in the you're chase? wondering what how they keep from uh spiking cars that aren't involved in the chase, they don't. So you mean Apparently, in the body, in the footage I'm watching, they're just editing out the wrong Yeah, cars? all the other cars that have to pull off to the side with their uh tires blown. It just happened in fact. Uh and if you go on YouTube, uh, it seems that there's a bunch of videos, but it uh, happened this Saturday. There was a chase in Arizona. In Tucson. Yeah, they were uh, chasing uh, somebody up I-10, and they had been chasing them for, in total, it wound up being a 31-mile police chase. They had uh, they had put out the spike strips, and uh, like this one lady, Kim Ajita, she had seen a bunch of other cars pulling off, but uh, she didn't know why, right? Uh, and she saw brake lights and whatever. So she goes over the thing in the road. She doesn't realize what it is. And then come to realize not one, but two of her tires had blown. Oh, gosh. And so she has to try, because of the spike strip, so she has to try to get off of the highway. Oh, that's and she's, dangerous. You know, losing your tires at 70 miles an hour, not a great situation to be in, Aww. which is why you don't want to, which is why the police use it on people that they're chasing. But here's where it really, here's the kicker. So she gets her tires popped. She had somebody right on her tail. It was the person they were chasing. Oh, but they got away? And their tires didn't <laughs> pop, so they were able to continue on for a oh, while. Meanwhile, unfair. this woman uh, is one of a few people who had their tires popped that had nothing to do with the police chase whatsoever. Seven cars were disabled by the spike strip. Yeah. And not to the person that they were actually chasing. So one more thing to worry about. Uh, is- see, as long as I was guaranteed to be okay, because you're right, it is hard to slow down your car if your tires pop like that, mm-hmm. if you're going so fast on the freeway. Yeah. But if you could guarantee that I was going to be okay, uh-huh. and you can guarantee that the Tucson Police Department was going to give me some- for your tires? And some I'm sorry money. Oh, yeah? <laughs> so if uh-huh. I could get both, then maybe it wouldn't be so bad, but that's dangerous. I'm I'm guessing that they probably don't give you a lot. <laughs> they do. The, you think? Oh, Does man. it say? You could sue them, I would think. That's sue dangerous. Sue the police department. No, I'm suing the spike strips. <laughs> the that's spike. where I'm Ooh, suing. That's a great idea. You're I'm right. I'm not suing the police Don't officer. sue the police department. You're not going to win. Nope. But the company that makes the spike strips. Yeah, going after somehow that. Somehow they should be held liable. That is thinking like a lawyer right that's there. That's right. I'd find something else that I could do to sue. Yeah. Uh, you know, that is dangerous, but thankfully everybody's okay. And I think and they, they did catch the, the person, I believe. Uh, that, I think that's wh- that's one of many reasons why in lots of localities, they just don't do police chases. Mm. Once a person starts to run, they're just like, it's not worth it because you might catch this one person. Like I learned this on Live PD. You might catch the one person, but for all the people you're putting in danger or, you know, uh, all the all the money it may cost the city because of the damage done mm. and the other people that have their tires pop, all this stuff. Uh, it's not worth it. But so, in Arizona, apparently it is. What you're hearing is Hudson said, just keep going. And yeah. eventually. <laughs> Depending on where you are, the police will just let you off the hook. I don't know why you run. Like, they have your license plate. Like, they're going to find you eventually. Yeah, especially on the highway, right? You think, like, there's not. In Arizona, it's not like you can shake them by going down an alley or something. You're right. People panic. They yeah. just they keep driving. Yeah, well, uh, ho- ho- glad everybody's okay. The Riot Podcast. Radio View. You got any big plans for the weekend? Uh, you know, I did Christmas stuff last weekend, like Christmas uh-huh. decorations. Yeah. So I think I'll watch some football tomorrow. Of course. And I bought uh, so many Christmas presents, like... It feels like weeks ago. Yeah. But I have not wrapped anything. Ah, so well, I, you got the tree up. You I need to put I the presents under that. the tree, don't you? Uh, no, not with my dogs. Oh. <laughs> well, then why do you need to wrap them? Well, no, I just need to wrap them because, you know, that's the next step. You buy people presents yeah. and then you wrap them up. All right. Well, you're, yeah, I mean, you're really ahead of things on that one. <laughs> I'm trying. Yeah. I don't want to have.
have anything to do in December. I don't know if anybody else feels that way. Uh-huh. I would like everything to be done by then. All right. Well, uh, that that look at you. <laughs> You're a real go-getter. <laughs> well, and we're playing Forza in just a little bit. Yeah. We're playing Forza 5, which just came out. So if you want to head over to Radio U Riot or Radio U, either Facebook page, uh, you'll see the countdown there. Mm-hmm. And make sure you join us and watch. But are you going to do anything fun? Uh, well, like you, I'm going to be watching football for sure. But the other thing I have to do uh, and it's a have to. It is, I'm going to fix my oven. What's wrong with your oven? Uh, I or do believe, not know yet? <laughs> I believe the issue, and I'm hoping and praying that this is the issue, is that one of the two, it's an electric oven, one of the two uh, heating elements has gone bad, mm-hmm. I think, is like the, the issue. Like the coils or whatever? Yeah, yeah. The things in the, the top and the bottom that get red if they're working, yeah. if you turn it up really hot. But uh, it's not working. So I've, did you, I don't know if you've ever had to do this. Did you know if you want to buy a heating element for your oven, you can't. You can't? It's very difficult. I thought you just pulled it out and then you could just put in a new one. Yeah. I mean, you can't, I mean, if you can find one. Are they on boats right now and Uh, you can't get them? Like, is it a shortage? I don't think, I don't think it's a shortage. I think places just don't sell them because I thought, okay, I'll just go to, I'll go to Lowe's. I looked it up and it said, it said that basically like, just you need to know the brand of your oven and then basically mm. they're no matter how old your oven is they're kind of universal yeah as long as you just know the brand and the size and so i found my brand and so i was just like all right i'll go to lowe's or home depot or whatever i'll tell them the brand and they'll just direct me to the heating elements but you know what they don't have at lowe's or home depot Any which heat. means they don't have them anywhere in a store in the in anywhere heating is elements. heating elements. I wonder yeah. why. They just want you to buy like a new oven. A new, you're right. <laughs> they so do. And you're not doing that. Yeah. So I the the truth is though, I did wander around the store and I tried to avoid talking to a person so that they wouldn't try to sell me a new oven, which I don't even it's it's a rental. I'm not not the oven, but the well, get apartment. Your landlord guy to do it. Yeah, but you know how much a heating element is once you can actually find it. Is twenty five bucks? Why don't you just 25, buy it on, 30 bucks. Why don't you just buy it on Amazon? I, yes, that's what I did. There's so, a ton of them. Assuming that it will, I just don't know why. Like other people must need to replace their heating elements. They don't just don't sell them in stores. I don't understand why. But so I have to. So I've had no oven while I'm waiting for Amazon to deliver my heating element, which is supposed to come tomorrow. Ooh. And then, uh, then I have to actually try to replace the heating element. Which hopefully, it will be easy. But even if it's easy. I still have to climb into the oven. <laughs> and Don't shut well, the thing. Well, well yeah. But what's, my problem what's the is. the fairy tale with the Hansel and Gretel? Oh, or whatever? Yeah. <laughs> no, don't get in the oven. Don't. Uh, but what, I, what concerns me is the oven is very gross. Yeah. It, I've discovered that in needing to change the heating element that it needs to have a clean cycle run. <laughs> which is, this is a great time of year to do it because it's so cold. Dude, it'll just heat your house. How responsible of your weekend is this? Yeah, but but the thing is, I can't clean it until I change the heating element because it won't get hot enough. Sure. So I need to, I need to climb into the dirty oven. <laughs> So that's what I'm dreading. I'm just going to be so gross. Wow. And it feels like a a high stakes thing, too. Like, if I don't change it right, it might burn the house down. It's it's supposed to be easy, but I'm concerned. Don't tell anybody you're doing this, because I think you guys expect us to have bigger weekends Uh than what we have. Well, I'm going to watch football. I'll yep. play some I'll, after uh, we do the show today. I'll still play more Forza this weekend, probably. Hudson, you just I'm gonna told do cool, everybody. I'm going to do cool stuff, too. No, you just told everybody you're going to climb into your oven. I'm going to climb into my oven. <laughs> so I don't think you should tell ever, anybody else. I'm going to stick my head in the oven I mean- <laughs> and see how that goes for me. Everything you love about the riot, plus a handy dandy fast forward option. This is the worst of the riot podcast. And I want to know how you guys feel about it. In uh, the Ripley's, believe it or not, in Florida, they are collecting human hair. Ugh. They are trying. Yummy. To, they are trying to establish uh, a new Guinness World Record for the world's largest hairball. So. You- 